Welcome to Friends in Fiction, five best-selling authors and the stories. Novelists Mary Kay Andrews, Kristen Harmel, Christy Woodson Harvey, Patty Callahan Henry, and Mary Alice Monroe are five longtime friends with more than 80 published books to their credit. In 2020, they created Friends in Fiction to provide author interviews and fascinating insider talk about publishing and writing and to highlight independent bookstores. These friends discuss the books they've written, the books they're reading now, and the art of storytelling. If you love books and you're curious about the writing world, you're in the right place. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Friends in Fiction, five best-selling authors, endless stories. I'm Mary Alice Monroe. I'm Kristen Harmel. I'm Christy Woodson Harvey. And I'm Patty Callahan Henry. And tonight is our 70th episode. Can y'all believe that? It just goes so fast. Amazing. And we have hosted so many wonderful authors. And tonight, we're really thrilled to welcome another wonderful author and a friend of us all, New York Times bestselling author, Nancy Thayer. Her, her new book, Family Reunion, was released May 4th. And we're looking forward to talking with her about this new novel, her long career, and her beautiful setting for her books, Nantucket. Isn't that like the best setting for a summer read? So good. Who doesn't love Nantucket? Mm -hmm. And tonight, again, we have some very special announcements to make that we know you're going to love. And we did want to start off by saying, just in case you were worried about her, Mary Kay Andrews is <laughs> just doing something else tonight, but she'll be back. Don't worry. Yes. Everything's fine. I think while, she's yeah. going to join us on the after show. Well, fantastic. Well, do you think she and might? Then, oh, excellent. I, you know, I, I just assume that um, she's taking the night off so she can go scarf Mama, Mama G's, Mama Geraldine. Yes, there we go. Off yes. the corner. That's what I'm assuming. Her favorite thing. Yeah. So, yes, yes. So, so if you want to be like Mary Kay Andrews <laughs> and eat lots of. Mama Geraldine's cheese straws. Um, you can get 20% off at mamageraldines.com with code FAB5. They're a great partner for us. We love their cheese straws. We love their cookies. And if you haven't tried them yet, we hope you'll try them out. And you know, we have been telling you about our big podcast surprise. Well, here it is. We have partnered with the indomitable and adored librarian, Ron Block for the Yay. Friends and Fiction Writer's Block Podcast. Yay. We are so, so excited. Now you can join us for more than just the show. Listen in as the five of us at Friends and Fiction, along with librarian Ron Block, have fascinating conversations with authors and in-the-know publishing experts. This is the podcast for book lovers and storytellers alike. Let's bring Ron on to tell us all about it. Yay, Ron! Yay. I am so thrilled to be part of this team, and I can't tell you what a thrill it is, but I will tell you that eight-year-old me is inside here screaming. <laughs> I get to join some of my favorite people on the planet. You know, I adore you all, and I just, I'm just so thrilled to have this opportunity to work with you all. Um, I want to just tell you the first one we have coming up, because we've got quite a plan already in place. On June 11th, Christy Woodson Harvey and I will interview Wade Rouse, who is the author of The Clover Girls, and Alyssa Friedland, who is uh, a new author for me, but I lo I'm loving her book, A Summer, uh, a, what is, uh, The Last Summer at the Golden Hotel. So it's oh, there's yeah. that. They're, yeah. they're, we're ready to go, and it'll be our first oh, one. It's a great that, cover, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. It's very different. I love I, it. I'll tell you ahead of time, if you liked um, watching Mrs. Meisel, on oh, uh, Amazon oh, Prime, that's you're it. gonna you're gonna want to read this one. So awesome. we're gonna have a lot of fun, and uh, and I can't wait to get started with that. But looking ahead, we have so many other things coming up, and I'm not gonna tell you the details so that you'll come back and read them. But I'm gonna give you <laughs> some of the categories. We are gonna have um, 
a couple of amazing origin stories. You know, we all like to know where books come from and what the original kernel is and how it blossomed into a book. So we've got a couple of really great ones coming up. Um, we're going to have a special Pride Month episode. We're going to have three very different but very, very awesome members of the LGBTQ plus community on to talk about their work and their history. And that's going to be very fascinating. We're going to look for library superstars. We're going to try to bring in a new angle and some people in the publishing industry. Did you ever want to know how a library puts its collection together? That might be coming. I you never know. know. I know. Yeah, right? I know that. Like we walk in the door and we don't, we're like, oh, how did they get all yeah. these? Well, yeah. we, we, this is one of the things we're going to do. Great authors, fantastic authors, debuts, memoir, lots of diversity, and there's so, so much more. It's so much more. So I want you to stay tuned to the uh, Friends and Fiction outlets on every platform. Uh, make sure that you go to your favorite podcast platform and subscribe and like them because that's how we get stronger and bigger and we can bring better things. Um, so I do want to thank the Fab Five for inviting Aww. me to this party. You are all amazing. and. I, I'm just so honored that you're trusting me to be a part of your community. So I would like to propose a toast to your 70th episode. Oh, thank you. Oh, and, my you know yes. and I have a special guest. Show us. Mary Kay's here. <laughs> <laughs> He's here. Happy That's 70th true. anniversary. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> That is excellent. Thank you, Ron. So this shows us how great the podcasts are going to be. And the right. only thing we forgot to mention is that they are going to be every single, single Friday. Friday. So every Friday, there will be a new podcast episode yes. starting this right. Friday. Right. And, I am so excited to get started. And I just have to say this. If you're one of those people that's kind of like not into podcasts and you're like, I don't know when I'm going to fit that in my life. My new thing now is like when I clean up the house at night and like get the yep. kitchen ready for the morning, I listen to the I listen to the Friends in Fiction podcast because there's so many episodes that like right. one of you guys have done that I haven't done. And it's like the greatest thing in the world. And I like look forward to like cleaning up my kitchen now. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's yes. awesome. Yeah. That and little something that waste it could be wasted time, or you could be listening to one of our podcasts. And, yeah, and listen that to that beautiful, good. soothing voice of Ron Block. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> I, I want that in my ear. The radio wow. voice. That's yes. funny. I don't I don't hear that on this end, but you know. it's a good <laughs> oh, one. Oh, you sound great. And, also, and Patty, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no. I just I want to make sure say... I go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 it's no, your no, 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 you. It's your <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, 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 go oh, all you, all you, Ron. I just want to remind people: anybody who wants to connect on social media, I'm at Ron Block on Facebook, RS Block MTM on Instagram, and RS Block on Twitter. So um, tune in; I'll give you some behind-the-scenes tidbits. I'm so happy. It's well, so I was great. Just say, I commend Patty on everything she's done getting this up and running because Patty's yeah, kind of been very hard, Patty's yeah. our podcast person, and she's done such mm -hmm. a great job. So we're, we're just has. all so Thank excited you. about this. Thank we you, Patty. Would, be totally lost without yes. both of you. So thank you. <laughs> it's not true. This is all very exciting. And I have to say, we can't wait. I hope you all can't wait. This is bringing our podcast to a whole new level. And we're all excited, Ron, to have you as part of Friends and the Friends and Fiction family team. Uh, and for all of you out there, we will put the list of all the upcoming guests on the podcast on our mm -hmm. website. And of course, announce them on our Friends and Fiction page, as well as our website, www.friendsandfiction.com. And you're going to be prepared for amazement. Yeah, it's going to be great. Thank you, Ron. Thank oh, you, Ron. Cheers, Ron. Thank you. What are you, you talking Ron. about? We love Thank Mary you. Kay. We love you. Yeah. Yeah. Mary <laughs> Give her some cheese, Josh. She's looking a little flat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So oh. We have another special surprise tonight. We love giving you surprises. We all know that Mary Alice has her first middle grade book, The Islanders. So that's grade grades two through six. So it'll be perfect for a little while. Um, and Mary Alice has her trailer to show us tonight. We are so excited. So yeah, Sean, take it away. Very short, very so sweet, cute. just like a middle grade book should be. It's adorable. So sweet. I'm, 
It is. And you notice, Patty, the turtles, they're there. I the saw turtles the turtles. Are there. I, saw them. <laughs> I wish I had my turtle hat here. I'd put it on. Well, oh, we should all wear our hats. <laughs> but I'm really thrilled. Just coming out. It's fine. I'll never be able to pull back the back. <laughs> This will be out June 15th, so right around the corner. And I hope you all think about it for your children's vacation. And the story is really about three kids on an island, and they are unplugged, which is something that I hope everyone helps to do with their kids. No cars, no stores, no Wi-Fi. So it's also a beautiful grandmother-grandchild relationship in the book. And I'm just thrilled it's coming out. That's all I can say. I'm absolutely delighted. Mm. And don't forget that Mary Alice will be launching the Islanders right here on June 16th with her special guest, Cy Montgomery. And if you pre-order the book tonight um, from our bookstore of the week, which we'll be telling you about shortly, Mary Alice will send you one of the very cute and handy non-plastic telescoping metal straw kits from Friends and Fiction. Um, and we cannot wait for the launch. We're so excited. Yay. And so Speaking of book launches, our very own Kristen Harmel has a special one this week. Yes. I went to Target yesterday so I could see it in, in the <laughs> wild and took a picture and sent it to her. Wait, hold the it book, up. Oh, hold it up again. There it is. The Book of Lost Names, so which we know was a favorite for so, not was, is a favorite <laughs> for so many of you is brand new in paperback and is available wherever books are sold, including your local indie, Target, Costco, Walmart, and our bookseller of the week, Mitchell's Book Corner in Nantucket. It is a great opportunity to get a fan favorite and a gift at a great price. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. I can't yes. thank you all enough for your support with this book. Everyone in the friends and fiction community has been so great. I'm so happy that it's out in paperback. It'll you know, be able to maybe find its way to a whole new audience. But yeah. speaking of fan favorites, Christie's The Southern Side of Paradise is also <laughs> new this week in mass market. And it's so and cute. We, it's we so were saying cute. before the show, it's like Christine sized. I can yeah, carry it. Yes. I can carry it's, it's it. Any yeah. It's like a little it's that, pocket. It's that awesome little <laughs> $9.99 size that's just begging to be taken to the beach. So um, they are available basically everywhere. So this is your a great week for new paperbacks. I think Mary Alice and Mary Kay have new mass markets out too. And we hope you will grab these books for your summer reading. Yeah. So you know that every week we have a parade essay. And this week's essay was written by Christy Woodson Harvey. It is called... Five lessons my son and the surf taught me. <laughs> Tell us about it, Christy. Um, it's funny because when we were talking about the Islanders, I was like, wow, there's there's so many echoes here of my, um, my parade essay for this week. But um, my son is very outdoorsy and adventurous and he just loves the water like he always has, just like nothing I've ever seen before. And so I wrote um, this week about some of the things that I learned on a little island adventure that we had um, a couple of oh, weeks ago that he taught me. I so, it. Um, yeah, it was great. And he's um, he's so good at just unplugging and noticing the world around him in a way that I think I've lost in some ways. And so watching him, you know, be back in that experience has been um, really incredible. And it was so fun to write about it. And actually, you know, he's like almost 10 and like not that impressed with me, but I think he was like kind of excited to be in the essay. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that he was. Um, so have any of you learned any surprising lessons from your children or grandchildren? I remember when Rusk was little, really little, like your son's age, eight or nine. He's 23 next week. He would wake up every single morning mm -hmm. and he would say, what are we doing today? Mm -hmm. Love and it. It, it, I will never forget it because he woke up with a zest for what are we going to do today? And I want to be more like that. Mm. That's wonderful. Wow. It's it. very inspiring, isn't it? I, I, well, he's an inspiring kid. I just mm -hmm. think he is. Great. He's a sweetie. Um, for me, I think it was actually very recent and it was about the book we just showed the cover for. Um, it's when I was writing my first book for this age group and my 10 year old grandson at the time, I basically had to pay him to read <laughs> some pages. <laughs> so, you know, here, would you do it? Help me out. So he, he was my <laughs> first critic and it was stunning. He took it very seriously. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And he, because he's a real reader and mm -hmm. he read it and not the whole thing, just maybe the first four or five, six chapters. And he said, you know, I really like it, but it gets interesting. And he tells me when it got good. So like a good That's critic, cute. he told me, you know, for my group, he says, mom, a mambo, which is what they call me for my age group, you know, for kids, my age is how we put it. Uh, we like to get into the story fast. And I'm like, yeah. ooh. Ooh, that's a good lesson for a middle grade author to learn. Yeah. So yeah. I did. I revised. I cut it, and I, you get right into the story. But thank you, Jack, for teaching me a lesson. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, well, that's great. And how how convenient to have your target audience uh, in, in the face, right, right under the roof. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. You know, I I would say the lesson um, Noah has taught me. He's super into Lion Guard right now. You know, which is a spinoff from the Lion King. Yeah. Um, so he will often, and he's five, he'll often say to me, like, if I do something and I'm like, oh, Noah, I'm so sorry. He'll say, mom, Hakuna Matata, no worries. And, oh, um, wow. and, but I mean, he really means it. Like he's not, it's oh. not, he's, he just really means no worries. There's nothing to worry about. And it, sometimes I get so caught up in worrying about things or worrying that I failed him or failed in something or, you know, done something wrong. And oh. it just, no worries is a, a, a good, a good mantra to live by. As long oh. as you're Let's mouth. get a sippy cup with that on it. No worries. Yeah. I think we do. No worries. And no worries on one page. side. And what are we doing today on the other? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, I think we all want to be sure to read the essay because it's going to spark a lot of conversations at home. But now we get to bring back, the, bring to us all the author we're all looking forward to meet. Nancy Thayer is the author of 31, I thought I had a lot, but 31 best-selling novels. And what I really love are her books concern the mysteries and romance of families and relationships, marriage and friendships, divorce and love, custody and step parenting, family secrets, private self-affirmation, and the quest for independence and the normal hunger for human connections. And that's what we all love about a good novel. Mm -hmm. Nancy was a fellow at the Breadloaf Writers Conference in 1981. In 2015, she was awarded the Romantic Times Career Achievement Award for Mainstream mm -hmm. Fiction. She has lived on Nantucket Island year-round for 33 years with her husband, Charlie Walters. Let's bring Nancy on. Nancy! Hi, Nancy! Hi, Nancy. Welcome! Hi. We're so oh, excited you're here. I'm so yes. excited to be here. Yes, your book, your new book. The last time I saw you, Nancy, was when you came to my Wild Dunes event on Isle of Palms, South Carolina, and you were with, even though she's not here tonight, <laughs> Mary Kay Andrews. Yeah. And everyone went crazy for you both. We had that uh, southeastern, northeastern thing going on at the beach, <laughs> and every, it was just a love fest. Do you remember that? It was wonderful. Yes, of course I do. And I remember when Mary Alice came to Nantucket, for yes. the Nantucket Book Festival. <laughs> that was so great. You took me to all the dress shops? <laughs> she had she had arrived and they had lost her luggage. The airline had lost her luggage. Oh, so she know. went to one. Now, this is summer. This is summer on Nantucket. And she bought this beautiful navy blue outfit. It was gorgeous. And she said, I've never paid so much for anything in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've worn it again. I hope yeah, you've worn it that's, again. That's Nantucket in the summer. Oh, that is so funny that you remember that because, I mean, the dress was great, but I came off the ferry smelling very right. So, but Nancy was my guide. Nancy was my guide, and I thank you so much. We should do more of that, all of us. Yes. I think we are. Yes. yes. Clothing shopping on Nantucket. I'm in. No, wait. Me too. <laughs> yeah. I'm saving now. <laughs> okay, so Nancy, Nancy, do you want to tell us about yeah, your Nancy, novel? Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. I think this is the time that we want to talk about your book, Family Reunion. Come on, you can sit here. Oh, <laughs> you've got one too. I've got one in my I, lap. I know. I've got a cat who... <laughs> a little reality here. I've got a cat who has a urinary tract infection. And, <laughs> and she wants to sit on my lap. And, oh. <laughs> so I hope you don't mind. 
<laughs> no, but we love it. it now and then. Um, she's had a tough day, oh, and sometimes you just baby. have to, Needs be to sit in your lap, hugged, right? We need your mom. <laughs> well, while you're hugging your darling cat, we all are animal lovers here. I've got a a, a dog yes. in my lap. Tell us about family reunion. Family reunion has a cat in it uh, <laughs> named Shadow. Yeah. Uh, the cat doesn't show up very often. Shadow, the cat, is owned by Eleanor Sunderland, who is 70 years old and who is a very happy widow. Uh, her husband died, but she's living on Nantucket in a wonderful big old house. And she's lived there for years. Her mother lived there, her grandmother lived there, the house is in her family. Um, and Eleanor has a family and she has friends, uh, but her best friend has just left the island to go on a cruise for the summer. So Eleanor's feeling a little alone and she invites her family, which consists of her daughter, Alicia, who really wants Eleanor to sell the house because on Nantucket, as many places on the coast, um, houses are becoming more and more expensive. Yeah. And uh, Alicia would like Eleanor to sell the house. They'd all be millionaires. Everybody would be happy, but Eleanor wouldn't have her house. So part of the story is Eleanor starting her life over in a way without her husband, without her best friend. Um, but she has a granddaughter who's 22, who's just graduated from college and who uh, has just broken off her engagement with a man who is going to go to Harvard Law. And Ariana, her mother, Alicia, calls her Ariana. She calls herself Ari. Ari has graduated. She's come home. She's told her mother and father that she broke the engagement. And poor Alicia's very upset. You know, he's he, Harvard Law. How can you not marry <laughs> a man from Harvard Law? Um, and Ari asks her grandmother if she can live with her and work for the summer. And Eleanor is delighted. Um, and that's the way the novel begins. Yeah, and, it, and it, it's such a strong story of family. I just mm -hmm. love it. Well, there is a family reunion in it. Um, <laughs> it is. Yes, you work towards it. <laughs> so, Nancy, every week we highlight a different independent bookstore, and I know that this week you chose Mitchell's Book Corner, which mm -hmm. is up there in Nantucket. Can you tell us a little bit about why this bookstore means so much to you? Oh, my. I've lived here for 36 years, and Ron Block knows the woman who owned it when I moved here, who was oh, wow. named Mamie Beeman. So and I used name. to do book signings for Mamie. But as I got to know Mamie, um, I was a little bit terrified at first because she would she would bellow. She would she <laughs> knew what everybody read. She didn't care who you are. David Halberstam would come in and she would say, Oh, you don't want to buy that book. Or or some other celebrity would come in, like Tommy Hilfiger. And when he would leave, she would say, He's a tool. And I was I was like, who does this? This is a small town. Um there were many other instances of that. And I wrote an essay and um, for a book about bookstores. And I mentioned that Mimi terrified me. And Ron Block said, you know, she's always terrified me too. <laughs> but her heart was enormous. And she yeah. knew everything about books. And she would look at each one of you and say, you should read this. You should read this. Wow. And she was oh, always wow. right. Wow. Um, so she sold her store to Wendy Hudson, who has had it, I think, for about 10 years now. And um, they redid the inside of the store. It's beautiful. It's more um, modern. And it has one of the three, I think there are three, there might be four, elevators on Nantucket. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> Nantucket, all the buildings cannot be taller than three stories high. Oh, so nice. Mitchell's mm -hmm. and in the hospital and in the library, you can take an elevator from the first floor to the second floor. Wow. Um, and you can't go to the third floor. That's off limits. <laughs> um, so it's a very, it's a very special, warm place. Everybody who comes to the island for the summer knows it because they managed to cram so many books into such a small space. Nice. And I know they're going to carry your your book, Mary Alice, not just your novel, but your children's book. Or your oh, book. wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. That's really cool. That's amazing. Well, and if you order Family Reunion from Mitchell's Book Corner, you get 10% off the price and it will be autographed by Nancy. So that is a special treat for yourself or for a gift. Now, Nancy, we're going to start talking about your wonderful book, but I have to say that Susan Goud is one of your viewers who says she's crazy about your necklace. Mm, me too. <laughs> oh, we are too. Love she's it. totally, yeah. yeah. Just this want to get that out there, right? Yes. Oh, she has beautiful. the best jewelry. Yes. Yeah, it, well, oh, that beautiful. is pretty. That's, that's what you call a looker. All right. So let's talk about Family Reunion. So with a title like Family Reunion, I think this book is particularly poignant this year mm -hmm. when families, you know, we weren't able to get together so much. And so the idea of a book that's about families gathering together just sort of strikes a really good chord. Yeah. So I'm curious, because this was a year, the pandemic year, when we were not able to get together, did this influence any of the topics or your plot when you were writing about a family reunion? I think one of the things that I wanted to touch on, because I'm learning it more and more each day, now that I have five grandchildren, uh, one of the things that I'm learning is that our family consists of people we can really argue with and, and yell at and dislike and still love and mm -hmm. still sit down at the table for Memorial Day dinner and still do things together. And I've always been interested in families because there are so many different kinds of people within a family. There are the ones that go off and they're the rebels and then they're ones who stay there and, and love being around their family. Um, but one of the things that I've noticed and that I write about or that happens in the plot of Family Reunion is that Eleanor, who is 70, and her granddaughter Ari, who is 22, are much closer in their values than the mother, Alicia, who's in between. And yeah. I think I've noticed this, and, I, and it's part of the plot of the book. Alicia's grandmother who is Eleanor's mother, or was Eleanor's mother, was very proper and very much interested in the teacups and the, and the lace uh, tablecloths and mind your manners. And uh, I'm wearing this necklace. My mother-in-law <laughs> used to believe when she came to dinner anytime, not just on Christmas day, that Charlie should wear a blazer and so should my son. And that <laughs> was not always something that either Charlie or my son appreciated. Um, <laughs> but Martha and my mother, when they were 70, they started new passages in their life. My mm. mother-in-law, Martha, started a social newspaper in Boston, and it was called Around and About Boston. And so cool. she went to waltz evenings at the Ritz. I don't even know if they still have waltz evenings at the Ritz, <laughs> but she would go to the opening. Of, she had champagne breakfasts at the Museum of Fine Arts when there would be a new Van Gogh show or something. Um, Quite the lady. Wow. Oh, she had, and hats. She wore wonderful hats. And so at 70, um, 
she was starting a new enterprise. At 70, my mother, who had been widowed, uh, married another man. My father was deceased. My father was wonderful. My sister and I weren't as fond of my mother's new husband, but that didn't really matter because my mother and, and her husband had 10 wonderful years together. So mm -hmm. I've always thought being 70 isn't when you sit in your rocking chair and start knitting. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And the older I get and the older our, our population gets, the longer we're going to live and the longer we're going to live lives that are fulfilling and helpful. And we're, we're just now learning this. This is scientific. I'm not making this up. It's really <laughs> no, it's happening. True. Which and is I, why Eleanor is so important to a character. Yes. She, she represents that, that I'm, right. I'm turning 70 or I'm 70, but I am, I am starting. Well, is she really at the beginning? But that, that's where you're going with the book. Yes. Yes. And she um, learns through the book, uh, because of what Ari, her granddaughter, does, Eleanor learns to change her life. Yeah. Which is what I loved. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible. So Nancy, your your name is just synonymous with Nantucket. I mean, we think yeah. Nantucket, we think of you. Uh, it, so much so that I actually did an event last week with Ron Block and Wade Rouse. And we were talking about how Wade writes so beautifully about Michigan. And we all said, oh, yeah, like Nancy Thayer writes about Nantucket. Like it was just like, duh, right? Um, so um, I, I think you bring it alive so beautifully. And, you know, it's something we've talked a little bit about on this show here, that at a time when we're still not traveling a ton or we're just getting back into travel, books like yours allow us to, you know, experience other places and to really be immersed in other places. Can you talk to us about why Nantucket is such a meaningful? I mean, I know you live there. I know you've lived there for a long time, but I live in Orlando and I've lived in Orlando for a long time and I don't set books in Orlando. Um, <laughs> yeah. We don't have to get into that, but, um, but, but <laughs> no, I, I, I love Orlando. It's just not, you know, it's not where I set my books. So Nancy, can you talk to us a little bit about why Nantucket moves you and continues to move you to set these beautiful books there? I think one of the differences between Nantucket and Orlando <laughs> is <laughs> you can There's drive one. away just one. Get in your car and you can drive wherever you want yeah. on Nantucket. It's an island, and it's 30 miles from the mainland, from Hyannis, and there are ferries that come, and now there are fast ferries that come and go in an hour, but they can't always come. The planes can't always come. We often have gale yeah. force winds, yeah. and mm -hmm. we often are truly cut off yeah. from the rest yeah. of the world. <clears throat> and if people decide to live here through the winter, they know they're making a choice mm -hmm. to be yes. isolated. That's interesting. And so the people who live here are very um, capable of, yeah. of reading or crafting or walking on the beach or going to dinner with yeah. friends. And it's, it's a real community of crazy people because yeah. We love it here in the winter. We love the waves. Um, mm. We love the storms. Uh, the people who are here are very interested in the environment. They're like Mary Alice's people. Uh, <laughs> lots of people are interested in conservation. Lots of people are worried about the water rising. Lots of people care about the seals I've, I've, mm -hmm. and the sharks. Mm -hmm. um, and we can go to lectures and meet guys who, who pull on O search. They pull sharks out of the water, tag them, put them back in the water. Um, mm -hmm. So there's this feeling of being so inseparable from nature, mm -hmm. so much part of nature, that it just it's it gives you. It's a spiritual feeling, but it's mm -hmm. also a practical very practical matter very, yeah yeah very okay. practical you know and and there's also there's such beauty as a storyteller in dealing with 
with the scenario that's kind of cut off and away from the world at large, you know, especially during the winter. And, and I think um, that's something that appeals to a lot of people about historical fiction that takes place a lot, you know, that sort of um, separation from the world outside takes place a lot in history, but it's interesting to find that in the modern day because of the place you're writing about. I, I think it's just beautiful that you do that. Oh, thank you. Nantucket is very similar to Beaufort, where, North Carolina, where I live, in the fact that it's an island, there's a ton of conservation, people are very much, the winter isn't, it? you know, I was reading, you know, when I read your stories and you talk about the difference between the winter and the summer and, you know, our, our winter population is like 3,000 and our summer population is like 30,000, you know, it's a very right. different, um, there are a lot of similarities. And so I love kind of reading about, you know, the similarities between the two places. Um, another thing that you and I have in common is that we both really love houses. Um, so yeah, in my um, other life, I have an interior design blog called Design Chic. And um, I love when I'm writing a book, thinking about the houses that are going to be in the story. And you know, I noticed that houses are really at the heart of a number of your novels. An Island Girls, Three Sisters, Inherit, and an Nantucket House. Heat Wave is about a B&B. &B. Summer House tells the story of a wealthy family in a beautiful mansion. Then Summer House, The Guest Cottage, and The Island House, and others. So I'm just interested, what interests you in writing about houses, and how do you think that um, they influence your setting and your stories? Oh, that's a wonderful question, Christy. Thank you. And before I talk about houses, I just want to say this is such a spectacular group, you all. <laughs> just looking at your faces, your oh. wonderful books. I love all of your books. And, oh, and even though I might meet you someday, I really might. Um, <laughs> but I am I'm honored to be with this group. I'm, oh. And I'm thrilled to see all your beautiful faces. It's just, oh. um, and, and you all, as Mary Alice knows, you're all so young. And, <laughs> and I love reading. I'm more a reader than I am a writer. Mm. And so I, I gobble books up. And when I get a good book by a new oh. writer, it's the best present in the world. When I, I go into the bookstore, yes. I'm just like, and I said to one of the people who works in Mitchell's, I just want to buy all these books and go <laughs> home and read. And yeah. she said she felt the same way. Uh -huh. <laughs> so houses, I was raised in a, a modern ranch house in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. And my mother had chosen to live there because she didn't want to climb stairs. <laughs> I thought was, um, well, I never, I never liked the house because I was always reading books that were set probably in a castle in England. Well, so I always <laughs> wanted to live in England. I've always felt on this island it's inescapable not to be aware of the architecture because most of the houses look exactly alike yeah. because it's something called Greek revival. And when they settled the town, they decided this is what the houses should look like because and this is getting too uh, complicated, but no, because no. they believe right. in the, um, separation of church and state. They were going back to the Greek ideas. And a lot of the houses here have Greek pillars. Yeah. Um, but the other thing about our house is that it was built in 1840. And, oh, wow. Yeah. And that gives a lot of that atmosphere, mm -hmm. but it also gives a lot of work. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know. Yes. Patching mm -hmm. something, adding mm -hmm. something. Um, mm -hmm. We the have knows, four yeah. floors. So when Sean, the tech guy, That's said, what I said. <laughs> <laughs> said, can you go get your earbuds? I walked up two flights of stairs and, <laughs> and found them because that's where my office is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's a big house. She got it. Oh, my God. It's good. Um, there, there is an atmosphere in this house, and I, 
I'm not saying there are ghosts, although a lot of people believe there are ghosts mm -hmm. in the house, but this house has stood here since 1840. It was wow. built by the captain of a whaling ship. Mm. If you walk down the street to Union Street, those houses were built by the like lieutenant of the whaling ships. Mm -hmm. And if you go up Main Street where there are these beautiful brick houses with white columns, those houses were built by the owners of the whaling ships. So wow. there's lots of history mm -hmm. here. And, and there's something mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. a house, a wall that you know other people have touched, other mm -hmm. people have sat and looked at the fire and wondered mm -hmm. what the world is about. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. we have fireplaces here. And I won't say we all wonder what the world is about because once my son was in here with a friend and they decided to uh, stick a stick into the fire and then see if their hair would burn. Oh, so, oh. <laughs> and their well, hair burned. These are the and great questions. It, it <laughs> these are the deep, deep questions <laughs> yeah. we ask at a fireplace. <laughs> mm -hmm. They are the deep, deep questions. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That is such a good answer. And um, my, it's funny that my husband always says, you know, Bedford is a very old town too. And he always says, you know, people will say like oh, something about our house and he'll always say, well, it's not our house. We're just the caretakers until, you know, oh, the next family true. moves in. Because I think about that so often about all the people that lived in this house before us and how mm -hmm. very, very long it's been here. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, Nancy, you are making me, probably all of us now want to visit, but you're making me want to live there, right? <laughs> it sounds like there is a story on every corner, Nancy. Like if you want to tell a whaling story, if you want to tell an 1800s yeah. story, they are just waiting there for you. It's fascinating. I, would, I wish I could do historical fiction and maybe I will someday because <laughs> this is a very strong island for yes. women. Women, oh, I love that. Oh. one of the main streets of the town um, is called Center Street, which mm. being Nantucket, it's not in the center, but <laughs> but it used to be called Petticoat be? Row because when all the oh. men went off on their whaling ships, the women ran the businesses, they ran That's the grocery awesome. store, they cool. ran, they yes. sold the, the needles and the hammers and they ran the town. And we've always had very strong women here. And um, we've always had a very wonderful African-American group here. We've had many Quakers. We've had many women so cool. um, like Mariah Mitchell, who was an astronomer who discovered mm. a comet. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very Easy. intellectual place. There's no mm -hmm. university. But as I said, there are so many people who are interested in in the history, uh, in the in the culture, in the environment. Come here. No you wonder you live here. there. I will have and write about it. I'll have yes. I'll have you all come and you can stay uh, if you're not allergic to cats. No, I <laughs> no. no. I love and even cats. if I was, I would pretend that I wasn't. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> Just to come. Okay, I'll back stay to on the, the fourth novel. Floor. Okay, back to the novel. I want to hear more <laughs> yeah. about family reunion. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, so family reunion is also among all the other things. It is a coming of age novel, mm -hmm. which are in many ways some of my favorite novels. So two women, a grandmother and a granddaughter, and you talked a little bit about the multi generational thing going, how they're teaching each other. But in this book, they both fall in love. Mm -hmm. okay. And in a number of your novels, you show how characters can fall in love at any age. We're not, we're not saying, you know, it's only for the cute young ones, my, my daughter and kids. So could you talk a little bit about the love story aspect in two generations, you know, sandwiched on either side of the middle generation mm -hmm. and how they find love where they never expected it? Mm. Uh -huh. First of all, I have to say, a lot of people do fall in love on Nantucket. A lot of, I mean, I met my yes. husband when I was visiting a friend. The director of the library oh. met her new husband oh. when she was introducing a talk. Oh. So it's, I don't know if it's because when people come here, 
they feel a little more carefree mm-hmm. and open to the possibility of love. Eleanor oh, is widowed and she was married to a very nice man, but he was very, um, very uptight, very, very proper and um, interested in the rules and being punctual and all of that. And when he when he's deceased, Eleanor, of course, is sorry, but um, she's very happy living alone and she doesn't even think mm. about being with another man but she meets just by accident an old friend named Silas who is like many of the men around here who are who have fished and they've boated and they've sailed and they've walked and Mm -hmm. and they have accepted old age with real joy Mm -hmm. and and when Silas meets Eleanor um they're at the Sconset Market and they're eating ice cream cones. And <laughs> my that. husband says, I have a lot of food in my books. And it's true, I do. <laughs> but what a nice way to meet someone over an ice cream cone. Yes. I yes. love that. It was adorable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Ari, who is 22, uh, meets the brother of a friend of hers. And she's not even looking for romance she just broke up with someone and she is just learning what she's really interested in and and her values she's learning her core values that's one of the reasons she broke up with her fiance Mm -hmm. um and so she gets to know not just beck but his family his younger his younger uh, sister his older sister is a friend of Ari's and they do the things that you do here in the summer that are so wonderful. They go sailing together, they go swimming together, they stroll around the streets. And again, it's not it's not a romance. My books aren't romances, although there is romance in them. Yeah. Um, but I think we all want romance in our lives. I think even when you're 70, Eleanor's age, and you meet someone, it's nice to have a companion to do things with. Uh, My mother was very happy when she met a man and married him and they got to travel together. Uh, And that's a strong point of the novel without any question that they're they're both the generations found love. And I think the word coming of age doesn't always mean a 12 year old or a 17 year old. Sometimes at 70, we can be coming of age, right? Coming into a new, a new new blossoming, a new new passage in life. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I wonder what we should do today. (laughs) But Alicia, who is the mother who is so prim and such a problem, (laughs) <laughs> she has a transformation in her life, and I'm not going to say what it is. Um, but I think at any age, we can have a transformation. Yes. Yes. And okay. that's what, a, what part of family reunion is, reunion is about. But we're also with our families, and um, we can argue with them. They can surprise us. Yes. Our memories, talking about houses. Eleanor remembers all the times her son used to ride a little tricycle in the house and yeah, ram into yeah. the wall. And that's that's not a bad memory. It's a wonderful, sweet memory of, of the house and the little boy and her life and that passage of life. Yeah. It's amazing. Kristen, do you have a question? Uh, should we maybe move on to the, did you want to just live move question. on to the, You want to do the live questions? All right. We have some, Nancy, what we do is we get to ask questions and then we ask our audience if they have questions. Okay. So let's move right into that. So from our viewer named Diane Russum Harrison. Oh. How do you think Nantucket has changed over the years you've lived there? Has it changed for the better or the worse? Hi, Diane. I I see you on Facebook. Um, 
you know, it's easy to say things are changing for the better or the worse because things are changing. Um, yeah. As I see it now, because I like houses and love houses and care for them, they're changing very much for the worse because yeah. now people who are billionaires can buy any house and there is a historic district commission that has a code, but a lot of the people will say, um, I don't really care what you think. I have so many lawyers, they can bankrupt the town oh, wow. and I'm going to tear down oh. this house yeah. and who cares if there's wood that was here 200 years ago. That's it's horrible. going to the dump. Lots and lots and it's lots. It's like a knife. Like, oh, oh, I mean, is, that just is heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. It's very sad. I've seen that happen mm. next door. We live in town. We have, as I said, a house that was built in 1840. And the twin right next to it um, was bought. It was torn down. It was renovated. Now they've just chop down the magnolia tree <gasps> oh, <gosh. laughs> so they could put a driveway in so, that cannot be good oh, karma no. <laughs> oh so gosh. there is a feeling and it's not just well mary alice talks about it in her book um people now come here because there's air it's beautiful and they <laughs> can have a house built or knock down a house and um and it doesn't, it doesn't, does it change for the people who are growing up here? I think it does because they can't afford to buy a house here. Yeah. They have to live with their parents or they yeah. have to leave the island. That's too bad. Um, I feel that, I feel like we're changing not for the better, but yeah. we just have to wait and see, don't we? Yeah. Um, because a lot of the people who are tearing down the houses and building new houses are also giving money to the library, giving money to a safe yeah. place, giving money to the hospital. And as our, as our population becomes much more diversified, it's the people who, who are tearing down the houses that are also yeah. helping to keep our hospital running. So, Diane, it's both, I guess. It is just changing. It's an and both. Balance, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Mary Alice, did you want to do one more question? I think let's do, do one, one more. more. Yeah. Okay, great. So we have one, Nancy, from, um, from Marjorie Bouse Roberts, who mm -hmm. says, I love how Eleanor is only a few years older than I am. I reminisced back to when I was young and how I am, to, I, and how I am today through your well-described words. Do you see yourself in her? Ah. I do. Of course I do. Um, I see her. She's much like me, but I, I didn't really realize that everyone who's in their 70s isn't like me. There is a, there is a, a line ah. in the novel where Eleanor says to Ari, her granddaughter, Yes, you can come and live with me. And you know, my bedroom's on the second floor. So yeah. you can have your bedroom on the first floor. I want to have a man over. I and loved that. People <laughs> so wise. Said, oh, oh, how can a grandmother say that? How was it ever thought? <laughs> and that's awesome. I it's realistic. Thought every grandmother would say that. <laughs> yeah. And that's why that relationship is so special, too. Yeah. And I could talk about this forever, but we have one more thing we want to listen to, Nancy. Mm -hmm. And that is a favorite part of all of ours, and that is the writing tip. So you've been writing for 30 some years. Can you share with us a writing tip? Um, the writing tip is don't be afraid to delete. I keep a file called cuts. I mean, I keep it on my computer and I keep a file and I put all my cuts there because otherwise I would think I was losing the best sentence or paragraph no. um, ever written. And, <laughs> and so cutting and saving in a separate file uh, keeps me from being anxious, but don't be afraid yes. to delete. 
It Nancy, hurts that, though. It hurts. It does. It does. Mm-hmm. Nancy, that's funny. I have the exact same file also named Cuts oh, on my really? computer. I do the exact uh-huh. same thing. Yes. Uh, Nancy, do you have any books to recommend tonight? Books you've been reading and loving lately? Well, you know, I have been reading uh, Surviving Savannah. And oh, I've been reading, thank you. Uh, uh, I did not pay her. her. <laughs> and the summer oh, of thank Lost you, Nancy. And found, um, and of course, the newcomer. Uh, one of the books that I've enjoyed very much is called um, "Summertime Guests," and okay. it's by. Let me see if I can remember her name. The book Erica, is up in the attic. Oh. I, hmm? um, is it? Oh, that's terrible. I'm, I forgot. I blurbed name. it. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it. Of course, Viola Shepard. Oh, it's Wendy book. Francis. It's Wendy Francis. Wendy Francis. Francis. Yes, yes. Yes. It was a great. I'm sorry. You know how when you are blurbing yes, like a whole definitely. bunch at once and it like runs. I mean, I remember the book really well. But yes, the titles run together, though. The titles yes. run together. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. I could draw the cover, but I couldn't remember her yeah. name. Yeah. But uh, the Clover Girls, and you're going to be talking to Wade yes. next next time. I've enjoyed that book so much, yeah. and I'm going to yeah. give it to a lot of my friends. Yeah, yeah. we all are. That's a great yeah. book. Okay, I, you know, my goodness, this is, I mean, the hour is just flying by. Yeah. So we, we have another question that we'd like to um, ask you, but all of you will will put the titles up on the Facebook page so you can get those. Mm-hmm. But we have one final question for Nancy after a little bit of housekeeping. Yes. So I just wanted to say a big thank you again to our amazing partner, Mama Geraldine's. Um, if you have been around for a while, you know that I always rave about their cinnamonies. Um, but especially during the summer, Memorial Weekend is a Memorial Day weekend is a really good time, especially mm-hmm. if you're at the beach or uh, somewhere where the people are going to be visiting. Always make sure that you have your pantry full of Mama G's because you never know when guests are going to stop by and they're an instant party. Good yeah. advice. And do not forget <laughs> to join the Friends and Fiction Official Book Club, uh, which is on Facebook and hosted okay. by our friends Lisa Harrison and Brenda Gardner. So they're over 6,000 strong now, which is amazing. They're still okay. growing. I was just talking to them the other day about a big um, one year anniversary we might be doing this mm, summer. Um, so which is so exciting. And we hope you will join them on June 21st to discuss Mary Kay Andrews' new book, um, The Newcomer. Mary Kay will be there. And in July, Mary Alice Monroe will be with them to talk about The Summer of Lost and Found Mm -hmm. and The Islanders. So this is your chance to ask the authors all your questions and really dig into the storylines with a group of friends and fiction friends. And if only Mm -hmm. we had one of them back. There she is. There she is. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Nancy, we missed you. I'm sorry. Oh, 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 oh! Your, 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 um, yeah. your, your pods are dying. Are dying. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna. <laughs> do this. Let's keep going. We have a few minutes. All right. So All right, Patty. while she's getting her sound straight, I'm gonna remind <laughs> you that next week we are delighted to host authors Sonali Dev and Mary Bly who you might know better under her pen name, Eloisa James. And if you are ever wondering about her schedule, it is always on the Friends and Fiction website, as well as the sidebar of events on our Friends and Fiction Facebook page. And don't forget to check out our new Friends and Fiction Writer's Block podcast with an every Friday episode starting this week. Yay. I also want to remind you really briefly, um, if I know y'all have been waiting for Friends in Fiction merch and we have it finally. We've got beautiful t-shirts and wine sippies and coffee tumblers. They're all available from Oxford Exchange. Um, So you can definitely check those out and we would love it if you did. So Nancy, we have one final question for you. One of the things that we love to know about our authors is what shaped them into the writers they are today. So what were the values around reading and writing in your childhood? Oh, well, it was read books. I I was raised, uh, my mother read incessantly. Every Saturday she took us to the grocery store and the library and we always came home with a pile of books library and, um i i always thought 
this is amazing. I just have this card and I give it to a nice lady and I get all these books. Yeah, so awesome. I grew exactly. up reading. Uh, my father read, my mother read, everybody read. I didn't know people didn't read and uh, my friends read. So I, I think it's a normal thing to do. And my husband, thank heavens, loves to read. Oh. So, and my children love to read and my grandchildren who are perfect, love to read. <laughs> That is so absolutely weird. lovely. And you mentioned libraries. We have a running tally on just about every author is, is libraries. Library. The yeah. libraries had an impact. Yeah. All right, y'all. You can begin summer right now by grabbing a copy of Nancy Thayer's book, Family Reunion. And don't forget, to if you order from Mitchell's Book Corner tonight, you'll get that discount. An autograph book. I mean, you're going to get Nancy's autograph book. That's such a deal. And the link is right at the top sitting at this page for an easy click. And I think we're all ready, girls, for our trip to Nantucket. Yeah, Nancy, ready. get the guest room yeah. ready. And it's always such a treat to see you. It's lovely. And your necklace is lovely. Mm -hmm. And thank you, everybody. It's a wonderful book. All her books are lovely. Nancy, thank you so much for coming thank tonight. You. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Nancy. It was wonderful. Bye. Bye. And that's our show Bye. for tonight. We hope see you, you in Nantucket. It. Oops. Yes, see you fine. in Nantucket. And next week, right here, 7 o'clock Eastern time. And we hope you'll join the Writer's Block with Ron Block and listen to all the new exciting podcasts. So good night, everybody. Happy reading. Good night. Thank you for tuning Thank in. You for tuning join in. us every join week us on every Facebook or YouTube, Facebook. where our live show airs every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And please, subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Instagram. We're so glad you're here. Good night. That was awesome. The show went like, oh, <laughs> Mary Kay, I think it's your end. Yeah, okay. Oh, no. Oh, no, we can't hear her. But what oh, a what great, great Can you hear me now? I don't I think don't we think can we... use your mic. I think I'm sorry. Um, that's too bad. Oh, we see you. <laughs> I think I'm Nancy's guessing. curious. We're all invited. We're all invited to Nantucket, and I think we should plan it. She was great. Yeah, that was. It was. was it was. She was so great. That was such a great show, and it, I think it was funny too. Like all the, there were just a lot of like nice parallels, and all of our segments of the show tonight that I think we didn't yes. necessarily plan, but um, yeah. she was lovely. I cannot wait to finish the book and yeah. so glad that Alicia has a change of heart because yeah. Christy, mm. when you get to the last line, mm -hmm. I thought it was one. Of, I always say that readers will sometimes forgive a bad beginning, mm -hmm. but they don't forgive a bad ending. Yeah. And the last line of Family Reunion is a beaut. I just love oh, it. I it's can't nice wait. Thing. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, she talks about Nantucket like, yeah. like a lover. Yeah. You know, like yeah. someone that she has known all of her life and loves all the same, you know. Like you Mary do about <laughs> Savannah. I have a surprise yeah. guest oh. for you, everybody. Um, um, don't leave. I have a surprise guest. Oh, I hope it's one of the babies. <laughs> is this any so, better? Yes, yeah, there I think you go. so, yes. But she talks about Nantucket the way, you know, Kathy, Mary Kay probably feels about Tybee or you do about Beaufort. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's just this great um, admiration for the place she lives that makes yeah. you want to go. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, I, I love that. I think like setting is so important. And um, I remember writing my like first couple <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Hi, nice to see Hi. you. I saw the window. It's this time for this time for Mary Alice to stop in. Oh, hi, Delia. It's, nice it's to really see you. nice to see you. I'm sorry to barge in. Barge no, no, you are never you are barging always in. Welcome, Delia. <laughs> never barging <laughs> in. We, you can barge in every single episode. What well, a really surprise. Congratulations Delia. on your success. This has been a very popular event. I'm, so I'm, I'm really, really pleased fun. for you. And you were one of our... Thank you for all you're doing for authors. Aw, thank <laughs> you. You're sweet. You were one of our first guests. Our first. 
Mm-hmm. That's right. I was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Delia, All right. You two writing up a storm. Hello. Sorry. Are you writing up a storm? I'm writing. It's pretty yeah. stormy. <laughs> It's more thunder than lightning at the moment. (laughs) It'll be great. (laughs) But we are waiting for your next book with Bated Breath. Bated Breath. We can't wait. I love it. And we can't wait for the movie. It sounds so good. I've been visiting the um, set, and um, Tate and Chase are so cute. Oh, (laughs) you've got to post pictures for us. Where are they filming? Where are they filming, Delia? Well, they're filming in the swamps um, outside of in in southern Louisiana instead wow. of oh, wow. instead of North Carolina because the swamps there and the marshes have a lot of different habitats with the cypress okay. and the um, Spanish moss just much more diverse. Than, okay. So you know it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And who's playing Kaya? Who's playing your um, the main Kaya character? Kaya is played by Daisy Edgar Jones. She's the oh, one wow. who's she's been nominated for a Golden Globe for Normal People. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, she's yeah, amazing. She's, she's just she's perfect for Kaya. She's so tender and so tough at oh, the same awesome. time. <laughs> well, we're so excited for you. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Right. Thank you. And we all want to come on the red carpet, so you know. Exactly. <laughs> we'll be waiting for our invitations. I'll help you in the movie. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. So I've never had so many offers for a date in my life. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> well, I'm shopping for my dress right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing it right this time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies. Nice to see you. Lovely to see you. No, no, no. The window going. (laughs) No, I was telling you to come out. (laughs) That's awesome. That's awesome. It's good to see you. Bye, Delia. Bye, Delia. Delia. All right, I'll be right there. Pour the wine. I could pour the wine. (laughs) I thought it was going to be one of the puppies. I mean, Delia thought it was a puppy. We thought it was a puppy. I know. Well, I that thought, was I, an I, amazing I, night, you guys. That was yeah. amazing. We missed you, Kathy. Mary Kay, we missed you. you. It was, uh, you know, that was just like a, I spaced um, when, um, you know, I was doing an event with um, our friend, um, Colleen Oakley, whose new book, The Invisible Husband of Frick Island, came out this week. Oh, thank you, Sean, for dropping that. Um, Sean I, is on his a game I know, Sean, whatever vitamin Sean took. I mean, was like, there was no mention of merch in that script, and he had no, that that was amazing. Wow, that was like boom. That's yeah, awesome. Sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. I, 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 didn't mean, to, I hated missing tonight, but um, I had wanted I, I wanted to support Colleen. This is a great, a such great a fun, book. sweet, tender hearted book. Um, it's fantastic. Oh, so he says he's just her on the show in three weeks, four weeks. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, soon. Yeah, That's she's so gonna be on the show. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm just great. Can't by. wait to have her. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I just love seeing you all. Yeah, we wouldn't be all together if you weren't here. So I'm glad you got here. I was running in too, like uh, just turning off one and jumping in the next. So it's you know when books are released, it's it's a busy time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know yeah, what's sure. going on with my my mic for the past. This is the second night in a row I've done a virtual event, and all of a sudden, I don't know if my mic. I guess I better check it out. Oh, Colleen's going to be on on June thirtieth. June thirtieth. Did you all tell? Did you tell people that we have uh, a new thing that we're going to do next week? Not yet. No. So we're I'm not going to tell them next thing. No, That's we know. We told them we have a big surprise for them next week. Okay. We had well, I'm going to go get a glass of wine today. So. Yeah. I don't know about you guys. I I would love a glass of wine. And I see Mary Kay, you already have yours. My dogs are barricading the oh, door. <laughs> what, what, what a night. What a yeah, night. It's so great. Wait. Wait. <laughs> cheers, cheers for all cheers of you. Cheers to all of you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.